my psychic abilities, I feel like one of the greatest gifts I've had in my life, but it, it stemmed from perhaps the worst moment in my life. Two, one, zero, Hi, this is Orion. How are you? Welcome to Stellar Life Podcast. I'm really glad you're here um, listening because I really like when you listen. And if you're new here, mm, you are in for a treat because today I am interviewing my friend and mega psychic extraordinaire, Mark Nelson. Mark realized he was a medium at age 11 when he saw his deceased father. Mark now works as a psychic medium and has appeared on 2020, the Gaia Network and Coast to Coast radio show and earned the title of most gifted in in a psyche competition for Fox TV. And we're going to talk about this in the show, about how he earned his title and lots of other fun, spooky type of stories that you are going to really enjoy listening to. So uh, stay tuned. You're in for a treat today. You're going to learn how to develop your psychic abilities, how to be more in tune with yourself and more and more and more. And now, without further ado, on to the show. Hello, Mark. Welcome to Stellar Alive Podcast. I'm so, so happy we're talking today. All right, and I'm honored to be here. This is going to be fun. I always yeah. enjoy having hanging out and talking with you. Yeah, always. me too. Me too, and... Uh, and uh, and I've I've been I've known you for years now, and I got yeah. advice from you for uh, for a while now, and it was uh, it's always impressive the things that you know and your guidance. It's really really powerful and beautiful. And before we dive into all that, can you share with me your origin story and how did you discover your psychic abilities? My psychic abilities, I feel like one of the greatest gifts I've had in my life, but it, it stemmed from perhaps the worst moment in my life. When I was 11 years old, my father was killed on holdup, and we never really knew the details. And he went to one, work one day, then he, came, then he didn't come home, then we were told by the police that he was deceased. That's how they put it. Your so-and-so is deceased. So, uh, flash, like about a month afterwards, after the funeral, after the shock of it all, I'm out in my front yard, we used to live in New Jersey, and I'm raking leaves, and I look up, and I see my father. And I'm just thinking, okay, I'm losing my mind. This doesn't compute. I'm, I don't know what this, why he's here. Everyone said he was dead. And he looked very much alive. And then he just said, I'm okay. I don't know if he said it or if I heard it from him, but I saw him smile, look at me, and then just... Uh, solid as he looked, he then disappeared. And that freaked me out because I really didn't have any spiritual context for that. As a kid, you know, we were raised with a, a very straightforward religious Catholic background. Do what you're told. Stand over here. Do this. You know, it was very scripted. This was definitely off the script. And then, flash forward or a couple days, like two days later, I'm at school and I see him again. And all I could tell Dad is, I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with this. It was like, please go away. And then he did for approximately uh, 25 years. So um, go forward to where I'm taking a walk one night after work. I work in, in advertising, I have, and I work as a writer. And I just wanted to clear my head one night. And I'm thinking, but we, like my wife Barbara and I just bought a home. We have a little girl. And I'm just, for some reason, I started to think about my dad and said, I wish you could see how it all turned out for me. I wish you could see that, you know, we're okay. And I kept hearing, I have, I am. And it's like, all right, am I developing schizophrenia on the fly here or what? You know, and so I said, or if you really are my dad, tell me something I don't know. Because otherwise I'm just having a happy conversation about nothing in particular but this voice in my head. So he told me things about my brother and then he told me things that only he and my mother would know. And it wow. turns out to be accurate. And it's like I had to bring this stuff up to my mom and say, you know, um, I had a dream and I saw this. And she said, that's so funny because what you said here is true. What you said there is true. It's like, oh, my gosh. OK, so I started paying more attention to the voices I, I began hearing. And then one day I thought, I got to see if this is just family or me. I went to a psychic bookstore and I 
walk in about as flat-footed, as unprepared as you could be, and I say, I think I'm psychic. Can I try reading somebody? I figured this is one place where they're going to be, okay, sure. And then, sure enough, the owner said, well, if you want to try to read me, you can. I did. I saw that she had a son, recently been in a fight with some other kids in school, some other, uh, a gang, frankly, and they beat him up, and, and the boy was convalescing at home with uh, this store owner's father. And so that was all true. They said, you want to come in and sit down and start reading for us? And I did. Then I started reading for another place. And then I realized um, I don't have to have the person sitting in front of me physically to to uh, read them. And so I started to do uh, readings on the phone. And then it went from like, oh, I can, I can do readings in a group. I got in front of a large group. And then I realized I could read for groups over a phone. And then I realized it's like the only barriers that exist to really working with and developing your ability are the ones that are in your own head. I even like people, I was asked to even go into like a, um, a home with history, so to speak. Murders had taken place and they wanted to know what I had picked up there. And I told them and it, it checked out. It was, I was hearing things that, that um, aligned with the facts of the story as they knew it. That's so it's amazing. Been, a little quick crazy journey so far you know very crazy and and the whole time you're telling that story especially the part about your dad i'm getting waves of goosebumps what does that well, mean it means that i think that uh it's there's something relevant that may have happened for you of, of a similar sort i think that mm. sometimes we get goosebumps when we feel like something is feels true feels right you know uh, mm. and it feels unexpected I mean, you can get goosebumps from all kinds of different things, but and if you do, I would say pay attention because I've gotten those, say, walking into uh, an environment I'm not familiar with, and I get the proverbial goosebumps, or we'll call them the willies. How about the willies? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just feel it, and I think, okay, I gotta. There's something happening here, and I need to pay attention. So I maybe you're feeling there. This reminds you of something that maybe you've had in a past experience, or something like that. All right, cool. And as you were reading to people, what was the thing that most surprised you? Well, what I find is that no matter how rich, how poor, how successful, how tragic, how this and that, we, we share many of the same beliefs. We share many of the same needs. Um, wealthy people, rich people, does, you know, they ask, does she love me? Am, am I making a mistake? Is this okay? Is my mother going to be fine? We are all joined by these same, you know, fears, worries, concerns. And it's, it's kind of, it really unifies, it, it allows me to see people in a very similar way. It doesn't matter who you appear to be. You know, your, your fears are probably not that different than someone else's. And it's, it's kind of unifying. It, it brings us together. And I hope it makes mm -hmm. more people recognize that you know we, to have more empathy for other people mm. i like to think that that's that's part of what happens when i do this work right and do you feel like this work is more accepted in today's world compared to to however many years ago you started yes um when i first got started i mean i really didn't know any other men that were doing this except maybe if, like one person on tv i didn't know about a lot of books and I, I really didn't take classes to learn about how to be to develop my ability. I read, uh, there was a, a very well-known psychic medium, John Edward. I read some of his books, another guy, John Holland, who I, I respect both of them. Then I had the chance to actually meet a very well-known psychic medium in the Los Angeles area. His name is, or was, he is Kenny Kingston is his name. He has since passed. He was the uh, psychic medium for Marilyn Monroe. And what's interesting about Kenny is that he showed me this one practice that I use, which I think is really effective. It's called psychometry. And the idea is that if you hold an object that belongs to someone, you can hear something about them. You'll, it's almost like a tuning fork or like how about a, uh, a guide. It allows you to tune in and hear, okay, this is what's happening here for this person. And uh, Kenny did it for me and he showed me how it was done. And it was pretty amazing. And so um, that was a great experience. But by and large, I mean, I, I think I took, I was in one development circle for a little while. By the way, 
if you are learning about your own ability, I would look into uh, or look up, uh, do a search for uh, development circles. These mm. are going to be groups of people that want to improve their own psychic ability and that they may or may not, they may not have access to uh, a class of some well-known psychic medium in their area or whatnot. Mm. But this is, you'll find that there are uh, in many different places. I would also encourage you to use your own uh, psychic ability. I like calling it your spidey sense, maybe. Whatever it is that you want to call it, your intuition, as you approach these groups, groups to see, how do I feel when I'm interacting with them? How does this seem to um, correspond or work with my feelings? Am I, is, do they feel, does this feel like a positive experience? Mm -hmm. And then I, I would pay attention to all of those things as you go out and search for them. Yeah, you have to be very discerning with with the people you hang out with. Um, just having a common, just having a common in interest is not enough. You have to be, you have to resonate with the group. You have to look for a high vibration, vibrational group. Very much so, yeah. because some people may be there may be a couple of egos that dominate the whole place, and they mm -hmm. may make it hard for you to explore what you're hearing. You know, the idea is to find a group that you can, you know, basically. Go out there and stick your neck out and whether you feel like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just giving you what I hear. That may be far more on target than anyone else is even aware. The other thing to keep in mind when you're doing this work initially is that someone that you know and love will uh, listen and go, well, that doesn't make any sense. But I would caution and say it may be more about timing than intuition. At this mm -hmm. given moment, when you read for them, it may not make sense. Mm -hmm. Two months from now, it may make all the sense in the world. Right. So that's the thing too. It's like, I don't get too hung up if I see someone going, oh, this isn't, I, I don't know what you mean. It's like, that's okay. I, I have to stick with what I'm hearing. I can't start. I'm not here to tell you everything you want to hear. I'm here mm -hmm. to tell you what I'm getting for you. Otherwise, I'm I'm just not really performing any value, providing any value. Yeah. And if you hear something bad, do you share that or you do you keep it away? Because sometimes when you when there is a bad prediction, just by the power of the subconscious mind, somebody can get themselves sick. So do you restrict in that? No, I, I try to make it useful. So, mm. uh, you know, if you hear or feel like someone is having a problem with a certain type of cancer, you don't mm. just want to scare them. You want them to to maybe use the information and to act on it. If, for example, I hear something like, all right, have, I, I feel like that there's an issue. This isn't you. This is just a per example. Uh, there's, have you had any issues with colon, uh, lower intestine? I feel like that there's an inflammation here. Please go to a doctor, have that checked, all right? Mm -hmm. The idea is I want people to know where to look for a health issue, say, per se. Right. Or I had a funny, some of them are a little almost funny, almost funny, where it's like this one lady, it's like as a throwaway line for her. Oh, by the way, keep an eye, watch where you walk, okay? I feel like that you're going to injure your ankle. Pay attention to your ankle, all right? And nothing happened except, and so she had a reading. She didn't get back to me in a year. A year on the anniversary of our reading, she slips on her porch and badly mangles up her ankle. Bad oh, no. sprain. And so it's like a year after to the day, she says, when I realized, I thought I heard that from someone. And then I looked at, it was the day. It's like, she became very convinced that I had a, an idea of what was important for her. So, oh, wow. and it isn't just health intuitive things. It can be about relationships. Um, I, I find that if someone is in an on again, off again relationship, I'll see everything from, um, this guy's going to keep coming back. And mm -hmm. I think it's in your best interest to not let him back. Or to be very, very clear about the, the, um, the role, the, the game plan, the boundaries. So the idea is to give someone information that they can use. You know, mm. it's like um, sometimes, say, for example, past lives can be useful to, to talk about. But to me, it's more interesting to how does that past life affect this incarnation? Yeah, people can be, can be so fascinated and... Uh... Uh, I don't know what the word for it, but they're so into that past life that they forget to live right here, right now. Yes. 
It's only about the lessons. Okay, so you figured out that you had a past life. whoop de doo What are you going to do with this? <laughs> well, you know what happens, to, though, sometimes is that people who have had, say, unfinished business in a past life mm -hmm. seem to be kind of caught up in the same thing, uh, a same issue. It can present itself as um, the, the dynamics of a relationship, their fear about certain things in their life, a health issue. Um, still love, I, I mean, I don't love it for what happened that she went through, but this woman I knew, um, she told me that she was having, an, I mean, I see, as I see you with a very passionate, although not highly functional, uh, affair that you're involved with. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then she says, um, I just felt like I knew this guy right away. And it says he's married. I got a sense that he's married. Yes. Okay. But he calls all the shots. He basically says, I'll meet you here. I'll do this mm -hmm. when, at this time. I'll be available now. And then, so she went, went along with it for a while because she just said I, he felt so familiar and, and so um, out in line with me. And so uh, we, we just instantly connected and we knew there was something going on. And then it hit me. It's like I see manacles from like a slave, slavery. I go, oh, yeah, the reason why you recognize them is because he used to own you. And now he owns you again. And oh she was my like, goodness. and she was, that was like throwing a bucket of water of cold water on her. She was like, Oh my God, that, that resonates. That feels like it's appropriate. I don't want to be owned by anybody again. Mm -hmm. I said, well, he owns you now. He tells you when to show up. He tells you what to do and you do it. How healthy and productive is that for you? Does it um, make your life better? No, no, no. I said, well, this is a great way to recognize that sometimes our past life issues that we don't resolve do come back and we have to address them in this life. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she did. Uh, last time I spoke to her, she was breaking it off. And it was probably so much for the better because nobody wants to be in a, in a relationship that has anything that reminds them of like lack of freedom, uh, fear, any, any of those attributes that can be associated with slavery. Right. You talked about psychometry, where you were holding someone's um, item. Yes. Um, and um, I know the the Hollywood psychic Tyler, he does that too, mm -hmm. where, where he holds the, the diseased uh, uh, items and then he can tell stuff about it. Mm -hmm. And if me or uh, one of our listeners want to try that, how do we how do we do that? We just... How do we do that without feeling like, like, like it's so weird and forced? Oh, I would probably say try to find someone that you don't like. If you try it out on your spouse, you're not going to know if this is something that you just know, mm -hmm. or if it's something that you're getting. And in truth, I find it easier to read for people. Like the, the worst person for me to read for is my wife. I have to <laughs> really struggle to get past. I know this about her. Barb, I know this about Barbara. Don't put it aside. Set it aside. It's coloring everything. Mm -hmm. And even with like friends that I've read for like you on multiple occasions, I really make the effort. It's like, forget what you know, listen to what's new. That applies to psychometry. So let's say there's a friend or you just met someone and they're curious about like, all right, you maybe mentioned that, you know, I think I have some psychic ability. And really, how do you work? I said, well, just as an experiment, can I try holding your ring or your watch or that pen that you bring with you everywhere? The idea is to be able to hold something and then to get some validations. And if you start to real, I mean, it really, so much of psychic work is learning to hear that voice in your head that when it's on target, it's tuned in, it's giving useful information. Mm -hmm. You really want to embrace it. Remember it. See how it feels. It may feel a little bit different than your normal voice the voice in your head it's going to have a certain quality so to speak mm. and so if you learn to identify that it, it's really helpful also too i love the, the immediacy of holding it it almost gives you a way to say like all right i don't care i mean this is what i'm hearing I've got to run with this i'm just going to go with it i don't know where, where this is going and so much of this work is about letting go of what you think you know and proceeding forward and uh I got a funny, I'll tell you a good, kind of a, a couple of funny psychometry stories. Um, 
I was reading, I was doing a, a, a group event, and someone threw a doll on the table. And like I said, just don't, I don't want to see who brings up stuff. Put it all on a table, and I'll look at it after everything is there. So that way I don't know this guy brought in this watch, and it, or the, she brought this and that. There was this Jack, uh, Jack and the, it was like Cracker Jack's doll that looked like he was from like 1920 or 30. Maybe six mm-hmm. inches tall, little little guy. A little fabric thing and I picked it up and um, I was in front of I don't know 100 people and I hold this doll and I hear the words I'm surrounded by love and Aww. it's like but then like six women in the audience all start cracking up it's like surrounded by love and they all start it's like and and they were all like looking at each other and laughing and they say okay and they, I say, who, who owns this? And this woman raises her hand, and I continue to reading. I said, can you explain what it means, surrounded by love? She says, yes. Um, me and all my girlfriends were taking turns putting this doll into our cleavage and taking photos. So me being this guy who, you know, I, 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 so if I'm in someone's bosom, I'm thinking love, all right? So, and you get <laughs> six of them, like six girls, and they're all laughing and cracking up, and it's like, okay. That's, I, it's just, I don't know what the story is going to be. I mean, sometimes they really get a story or sometimes they get a visual. And mm-hmm. when I, and that, at this point I heard words. And so I really feel like spirit will also mess with me. It's like kidding with me, throwing mm-hmm. this surrounded by love thing out there. Okay. There was that. Then sometimes it can be, um, a little scary. Like I got this big, like clunky looking, like it looked like a biker ring. It looks like something that would leave a mark if you hit someone with it. It was like, mm-hmm. you know, a, it was a large size ring. But I got this thing as I saw the guy, a, a man who owned this. I mean, the thickness of the ring finger was huge. But then I see, okay, all right, I'm supposed to tell you to be very careful about heart health. All right. Um, I don't mean to scare you. And I know this is a public place, but I'm getting this message that it feels like that I would go and get a checkup. Get yourself mm-hmm. checked out. Please see what this is about because I'm feeling like heart health is kind of shaky. And he looked like he could, you know, break a table apart with his bare hands. And so it's like he just looked like the picture of health. Like a week later, he was in the hospital in the ER from heart problems. Oh, and wow. it just was unexpected. So I guess the idea is like don't always trust what you see and don't always... I mean, don't don't try to second guess it, but it mm-hmm. really is a wonderful tool. Also, too, I've used psychometry when I go into um, a haunted house, a home with a history, where I literally put my hands on the walls and feel what, what has happened here. Ooh, but like, but Mark, aren't you getting like spooky? I mean, dude, is like stuff like bad spirits or spirits that can mess with you? I'm mean, like, what what about that? What about that part of it? Or or like. You know, diseased people are, I mean, some of them are nasty. Like, what about yes. all that? How, tell me. Share, share a little yeah. bit about that. Sure. Well, um, I have actually gone through an oppression, not a possession. An oppression mm-hmm. where it really changed my attitude. And I'll, I'll tell you what happened, and then I'll tell you how I would have should have done it. So mm-hmm. I was invited by a TV production company with Barbara to go to a home where a serial killer had reportedly killed at least one woman, we found out that he probably killed six or seven there Oof. or more. We lost track of how many women were killed in this one home. And so, and I saw the spirit. He was very clear. He was very obnoxious. And then Barb and I went home and proceeded to have the worst fight of our marriage, pr- pretty much. Wow. It's like, we usually just, like, we're, we, we tried, we've been married 37 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we figured out how to not want to strangle each other over little things. And this just went, and the escalation of it went from like, I'm upset to, ah, we're both yelling, ah. And it's like, this is, wait, and it's almost like, this doesn't feel like us. Mm. No, it doesn't. And so we realized, and where were we? We were just in a place where a guy um, killed many women. Mm. Okay, so we were in a very negative place. And it really struck me. It's like, oh my gosh. You know, we kind of, we, I was fairly new in all of this. And so I would recommend, or what I, what I do now 
whenever I'm being brought into a somewhat questionable environment or a place that has history, uh, I do, I surround myself with white light. I -hmm. try to be discerning and aware of the fact that there are spirits that are going to lie to you. They're going to tell you, oh, I'm just a little girl. I'm nobody harmful. But in fact, they may be uh, a killer. They may be uh, a spirit that has hurt a lot of people. They will try to deceive, um, fool you, get you to... Uh, I mean, it really is you're dealing with a conscious being. Mm. That's the one thing I will tell, tell everyone when they, if they get into anything of a paranormal nature. Consciousness survives the body. So this applies to whether you're looking to, re, um, to connect with a person that was, lived a pure life, was holy, was sweet, was kind... Or a serial killer, their consciousness can survive, and certain attributes, uh, characteristics, beliefs of theirs do not go away. In fact, mm-hmm. I've found that many, if you go into a place that has um, spirit beings around, they are actively rejecting the idea of moving to the white light or to oh, the absolutely. to the light because they're afraid of judgment. They're afraid of um, being judged. They're afraid of um, having to pay for the crimes that they've committed. Mm. So, I mean, we've seen biker gangs where I went to a house that used to be populated by, or um, there was this group, Satan's Disciples was the name of this biker gang in Simi Valley. I knew I was dealing with something somewhat demonic. We, we We bring meters with us electronic meters, and they'll give you a reading of 1, 2, 3, 4, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4. And and we also look to try to debunk. It's like, okay, we're getting a lot of electrical signals around here. Let's make sure that there isn't something that is triggering this that could be explained. Is it faulty wiring? Is someone running an appliance that generates a lot of um, what we call EMF meter readings, electromagnetic field readings. By the way, since 5G, do you feel like your meters are, are crazier or are they more just as accurate? I haven't seen that directly, although mm. I have been in places that are quote unquote off the grid, but probably within the realm of a 5G, you know, coverage. Mm. And we still get readings. I mean, it was literally in a house that had, that was not hooked up. It was just a wooden frame, a box, and we still wow. got meter readings in there. So that mm-hmm. may be the 5G. But, um, so oh, just in this house with Satan's disciples, we see, all right, it gets triggered by a little a meter in the refrigerator. It was an old fridge, and all of a sudden the numbers start going, like on the meter, and I'm looking at it, and then the meter stops at 66.6. 66. What? And I go, Oh, that's who you are. Okay. Ugh. Got it. And it really, that makes my hair stand up when I think about it. I know, me too. I'm getting like the, the, those goosebumps again. But, but. It, they, this thing really, it's like, this is who we are. Better be careful. I'm not afraid of showing you who I am mm-hmm. or what I, who I'm aligned with. Six, six, 66.6. And it was going like the numbers were flying by and it stops. Mm-hmm. And then it proceeds to go up and down, which is completely unnatural to most uh, electrical equipment. It's like mm-hmm. it go up, down, varies a little bit. This one, like, stop, up, down, but gave me a good look at 66.6. So what you do in an environment like that, um, uh, whatever your religious faith, surround yourself with protection. I encourage people to see a white light of love and divine protection. Here's, here's the non-denominational way to protect yourself going into a place, but it's something you have to believe in too. Mm. I use the words, I surround myself with the white light of love and divine protection. Mm. I will allow only positive energy to influence me. I will not allow the negativity of others to affect me in any way. And then you have to see yourself in this white light. You have to recognize that. I I would say that if you don't believe in God, you're going to get your your view of things changed when you you see something that can scare you, frighten you, change your mind, you know? So just as there are negative energy entities, there are positive and loving ones too. So hold that thought. Yeah. 
when I went to Egypt with Stefan, we went to the Valley of the Kings, and we visited some tombs, and then because the economy is so bad there, we were able to, to pay, uh, it was a lot of money to go in, but we were able to pay to go into the tomb of Nefertiri. And it was really magical. You see, you're in the desert, and it looks like a, it look, looks like a scene out of a, an Indiana Jones movie where, oh, yeah. like, the, the 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 guy just opened this big safe uh, door, <laughs> like, and it's all like it goes like, and then like he's like he's twisting it, you know, just opening it. It's it's really cool. What did you feel when you were in there? I mean, did you feel positive, negative? When I was there, I felt the energy was like so strong. Like there were like some powerful things there. And I know that in Egypt they had some they had some sorcerers. And I was like for me, I just wanted to like soak it all in. And Stefan and I was like, Stefan, I'm just I'm feeling everything. And he's like, Hey, be careful. You don't know what lives here. <laughs> so so yes. just like and then I, I had to kinda of, like close myself off. So nothing really, mm, uh, you know, not very positive come come in my, you know, they, they can, what do you think about possessions? Like when people get possessed or spirit connect, is that true? Like, does that happen? That definitely can happen. Um, I, I feel like that it's rare, but it really can and does happen. Uh, I've been around evil, uh, places where there is very tangible evil. Again, there was this house in Los Angeles associated with a very famous murder. Mm. And that the guy who was responsible for this was, um, according to his son, who oddly enough was a um, Los Angeles police homicide detective. Had wow. a, isn't that wow. weird? To talk about there's fate. There's something there where a homicide detective's uh, father is, is, a, is a murderer. So, mm. but I would say that you can, there really, wait, I'm sorry, I don't want to lose track of where I'm going, but the idea is that there really is evil out there and that you can feel it and that you, it's important to protect yourself and that um, just be conscious of the fact that these beings want to, they want to, uh, I mean, possess you, control you. They, they have very few pleasures in life, in their existence. I don't know if I'd call it a life, mm -hmm. but... Um, it's true. The other thing I've heard about possession, and I've heard this from, uh, I, 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 get, I kind of bump into law enforcement. This guy was a, uh, a detective for narcotics in the Bronx in New York, which was a tough line of duty. And what he found is that people who were um, doing a lot of drugs and not really in control of their mind, their body, they were they were addicted. They tended to have satanic or demonic um, connections. They were doing things, yes, they were drug addicts, but they were doing something that was really, it, it crossed the line from just being another stupid, sad, painful drug addiction to, and I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say stupid, that's not being sympathetic. Many people are brilliant and they become addicted. Mm -hmm. But it was just, to me, as a waste, but they they leave themselves open and it seems as though when you're at a low ebb when you're not functioning well when you're depressed you're addicted you become an easier target for someone uh, a, a spirit being that is demonic and then i've heard this and i believe it to be true because i've, I've seen it like in talking to this one policeman who ended up leaving the police force and becoming a um, someone who an exorcist He's like one of the very few non-priest uh, uh, exorcists that exist in the United States. Mm. Um, there's him. And then I've seen drug addicts. I've... Have you seen that on somebody? Have you? Did you have a reading where you like you saw it on somebody and then were you able to help them? Yeah, well, um, I'll be honest. I have not seen a fully demonic expression although i've yeah, seen i'm not talking about like the crazy like horror horror movie stuff that we see in their extreme because i know that there are different levels and i know uh -huh. that it can like a dark energy can attach to someone and even just create depression can you see that and help them release it i went to the home of two people who were former homeless drug addicts who were getting their lives back together but they were 
not living really well. Mm. They were getting by and they were really frantically holding on to what they had and they had a little girl. Mm. And then the little girl started to tell them, my doll is talking to me. Oh. My doll, and it's, that is like out of a horror movie. And so we were called to go to this house and um, I bring holy water. I was raised Catholic. I use, I keep holy water handy just because it, it, it is a, uh, a way to uh, let someone in spirit know that this is real. Uh, again, whatever your faith is, um, yeah. there is, you can use holy oil. You can use any number of things to, you know, bless a place, a location. Yeah, I mean, like in, in the quantum, is like whatever intention you put on something can make it holy and can make it like... Help. I got it. here's my little creepy story about the doll. I have my you know we've all heard about haunted dolls. Well, I I look at this doll and it's it's kind of big and it's like I don't like big dolls. All right, I just don't like. It's a little too creepy for me. But I said I think that is there are there batteries in this doll because I do like a reading and I get uh, digit I get electromagnetic waves EMF reading on this doll. Oh, it has batteries in it. Take the batteries out. Take the batteries out, isolate the doll, make sure that there isn't anything else coming from somewhere else in the house, do another test on it. And it's like, it's it's just as loud and just as active as before with no batteries in it. I know, I took out the batteries. And so there's oh nothing goodness. inside this thing that should be emitting electromagnetic fields, all right? And so I, I literally bring out a bottle of holy water uh, and I reach for it and uh, in addition to getting this emf like going boop 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 we have like a couple of other meters that are all it becomes like three or four meters all lighting and blinking and i pull out the holy water and it's like goes stop so there seems to be a real fear that if you are coming from a place of faith if you're coming from a place of belief in god universal good love strength again regardless of your your religious faith mm -hmm. if you're coming from a place of the light and you have faith in that the light will protect you those spirits just back off shut up they they just don't like it don't want to be around it and and it was it was just like people are like saying did you just see that all of these lights went off as soon as you you know showed them the holy water they didn't mm -hmm. like the holy water right and so that was pretty weird and then just talking to this couple and trying to make sure that Please, you know, if you're having trouble with whether you're staying clean or not, please do what you can to stay clean. There's more than just what you see here in terms of, say, uh, uh, your own physical health. There's a spiritual side to staying clean. Yeah. And that's also, too, like from a, uh, an energetic point of view. Mm -hmm. If you're living a life that where you're trying to live at a high vibrational level, you're, you're, you know, you're conscious of how you eat. You're conscious of how you interact with other people. You're conscious of the energy that you project. Then it stands to reason that if you're vibrating at a lower level where you're addicted to drugs, you, you don't allow yourself to have any peace, your physical health is bad, you're going to attract more negativity. Yeah, I can totally see that. Mark, can you uh, share with people uh, about your TV show, how you were selected out of, I don't know, 700 psychics and what happened there? Well, um, again, I was just doing readings for people. I don't know who's who. I just read for some people. And then I got a call from someone who says, we're casting for a show. Um, there's going to be a couple hundred psychics we want to bring out. This was for Fox TV. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, Marta Kaufman, who was the producer. She produced Friends. She's very prominent, very lovely, nice lady who very kindly invited me into her home in her life. She didn't know me. So I end up going through, I get there and it's the weirdest thing in the world being around a couple of hundred psychics. I'm usually mm -hmm. like one or two and we're spread out in a huge group. It was just the weirdest cattle call you can imagine. 200 psychics. You got your ones with turbans. You got your ones that, you know, you know, look a certain way, behave a certain way. We can be, as a group, rather eclectic. So, <laughs> but what happened, <laughs> imagine, 200 psychics of very different shape, size, color. Uh, some of them look like me. I, I look like I could be a guy that you meet at Home Depot, which would probably mm. be very... <laughs> so, 
But they um, started asking questions. And so I went through multiple rounds of interviewing uh, production assistants and then directors and then producers until finally it came down to, uh, they started with a group of 200 of us and came down to like 16. And then I read for a couple of network people. And then I ended up with like, okay, you're on the show. And so wow. I remember it's like, I knew I got it when and like they gave me a little picture of this. It was like a, like a sepia color image. And it was this, it looked like it was from 1905. And I just looked at the picture and I said, is there a mirror? Is this Miriam? And then they all kind of just like melted like, uh, uh, and I said, Oh, and this is Miriam belongs is connected to someone at this table. And the guy was, yes. Okay. Uh, she says she loved what you did with her, the backyard recently. And he's like, we just, uh, we just changed our landscaping. Okay. It's almost like, all right, you got the job. It was like, okay, it's like they <laughs> truncated my interview and went like, and it was such a wonderful, positive, loving experience. But okay, all right, we'll get back to you. And it's like, either I really did badly or I did really well. But I just, I got to go with what I hear. And so it turns out I did the show. And then there was, I think, six of us. I think it was just six of us that ended up on the show. And they put us through all kinds of weird tests. Like, uh, you know, they brought me to a house with history. And I saw a woman living there, a mother who, um, back to the drugs, was buying drugs and was murdered by one of the addicts that she was buying from. Oh, my I goodness. I said, there's a woman that got killed in this room. And I see her being stabbed to death. Yeah, that, that happened. Okay. And then a funny one. That's not, that's not much fun there. It's pretty tough. Uh, I, I try to, you know, keep my own energy level up. I try to be positive and, I mean, you know me, Ryan. I'm not going to be, I am hardly the, the dark, somber, macabre kind of guy. I'd rather be, you know, joking because it's just, it's who I am. But then they brought me into a room with like uh, six women and they said, one of them's pregnant. Who do you get? And, but right before I went and, the, and all of the women were early in their pregnancies, you really couldn't tell. Mm. And so, um... I, before walking into the room, I got this very strong visual in my head of a, um, a soldier, like a World War II cartoon and kind of like your typical World War II like uniform. He was in a uniform. I got this image of a guy in a uniform. Hmm. I go into the room and one of the, the women is wearing like a faux sailor suit, faux oh. sailor, like navy blue with like little epaulets. Just just kind of indications of it. And I went straight to her. You're the one. And it was just like, I got to go with this. I got in a uniform. You're the only one in a uniform. That's it. And I was the only one that picked her. And it turned out that she was the one who was pregnant. And it was just like, you know, with all of these unusual things, I would say for everyone who's listening, it's like, you're going to get messages that you don't know what to do with. Or it may sound crazy. Write it down. Honor it. And try to, and then check to see if it makes sense. The show was a great example of being able to go, and I didn't have to wait. And they told me, "Yep, she, you got the right one." Or they told me, all of us afterwards, only Mark was the one that got her. Mm. Ironically, we all picked different women, and we were isolated. Nobody knew who was picking who. Oh wow! Oh, and then oh. Uh, lastly, uh, they brought me in to like meet these three young people. This is going back seven years, eight years. Something like that, where um, they were in their mid to late 20s. And I see the three of them, and then I start to get little movies in my head. Black boots, people marching around, guns. Um, and then I saw police activity. And I'm looking at them, and then I realize, oh, God. oh, It's almost like, oh, oh, oh shit, this is, this is what it is. It's like... Did the three of you go to the same high school? I thought at first, like, oh, they're military age. They were part of a military operation. It's like, uh, yeah, we went to the same high school. And then I heard, it's as if someone whispered in my ear. I hear Columbine. Columbine High School. Where the murders took place in Columbine, Colorado. Oh, my goodness. And then I realized, okay, you were hiding by the library. I was right below the library. You were wounded at the back of the school. And I still get kind of goosebumpy about it, but I just heard it. And it's like, yep, 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 yep. And then, I, and then it's like I'm walking away. I said, by the way, who's pregnant? Who's got, who's got the baby coming? 
And then one of the guys raised his hand. So it's just like, I, if I'm, I have to just allow myself to be open, to not be afraid of receiving messages, keep yourself protected. And that's what I advise to everyone. You just don't know what you're going to get sometimes. It could be a baby, it could be a killer, it could be anything. <laughs> that's very excited. Is your wife psychic as well? She has ability. She definitely does. And uh, she's had her funny stories where, you know, they, they will bother her. And it's like, just like in life, um, certain people are more comfortable interacting mm -hmm. with um, a certain person, man, woman. Um, and she's definitely um, got, she has ability. And it's useful when the two of us go out together. We'll... Um, <laughs> It is. It's like, hey, what'd you do last night? Oh, we went to a haunted house. Do, do you ever go and you're like, okay, shut up. I don't really hear anything about anyone. I just want to have dinner. Can you turn it on and <laughs> off? Um, sometimes, I mean, most of the time I can turn it off. But we literally went to dinner up in like uh, Monterey. I think it was Monterey or Carmel, somewhere in Northern California. And I'm sitting in this restaurant, and I look up, and I, I swear I get this visual of someone hanging in the restaurant. Wait. And I said, all right, I know it's creepy and, and kind of grotesque, but I asked the waiter, was there someone that died in this place? Yes. Did they hang? Did they hang themselves? Well, they were hung. It was, it was yeah, okay, right over there, right? And it was just like, oh, Crap. All right. Yeah. All right. I believe you. And here's your spaghetti. <laughs> Have a nice dinner. <laughs> Try the garlic bread. It's fabulous. <laughs> but I swear it was, It just went like, God, I'm getting this persistent visual of this person hanging there. And oh, it was God. just. Uh, that's, 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 that's a little harsh. Um, Most, I can turn it off, though. I mean, I'm grateful. I have to turn it off. But I just yeah. can't think like that all the time. But that, it. You can turn it off, and then it defaults back to like, oh, there it is again. Yeah. Okay, something creepy. Just like your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you can you can turn off your iPhone, and it still emits a, sig a signal, even if it's off. Uh, oh, that's good to know, so they can find yeah. you anywhere. Yes. They... Yes, yes. Perfect. I guess it's like that, in a way. Um, I, I've been hearing uh, ringing in my ear, but it's not ten tinnitus. It started about two and a half, three weeks ago. And it's almost like I can hear it, the ringing in my forehead. And I just feel like there is some kind of a transmission mm -hmm. that is coming that I cannot translate. And it's been strong and it's been consistent. And it only happens when I listen to it. So I, I don't think it's something physical in my ear. I pretty much think it's something that is not of this physical realm. Okay. Well, you know what? That I do believe that the, that we can be visited by what I would call uh, their spirits, but also dimensionals. Dimensionals mm. can be beings from another dimension. Mm. So they can be considered, say, um, aliens, mm. people from other places. And I do think that if you are, if you have a sensitivity, they're going to come to you with messages. So if you want to learn what really is happening, try to find some quiet time for yourself. I know you're a busy lady. You've got a lot going on and, <laughs> and, and it's wonderful. But if you can carve out a little quiet time and keep the pen handy and then don't edit what you get, you might get stuff that's like, that doesn't make any sense at all. What the heck is this? What the heck is that? I guess pen to paper is the answer because I was like quietly s sitting with myself and getting nothing but the, 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 the humming or buzzing gets like louder and, and quieter and louder and quieter and it's all over my forehead and then it shrinks and it's kind of like around my, my like the, the center of my brain. It's very interesting. Very interesting. You know what, what might be too is that I tell people if you're having trouble meditating because you have all these thoughts, don't focus on everything. Focus on one thing. It's it's not it's not the thoughts. It's, it's the vibration and the sounds. Not the, the maybe that vibration and sound is the thing that is what would be useful for you to focus on. Mm, yeah, yeah. I and wanna... that you may not get a verbal something, but you might get feelings. And I also feel that I believe I've seen it, I've experienced it, where what starts out as kind of a, a vague or not fully developed idea can mm. 
transform, unfold, become something more solid. Mm. And so you might be going, I don't know why this is buzzing. I wish it would stop. I mean, it can be the most obscure, silly thing. It's like, why? it almost reminds me of washing machine. All right, what about a washing machine? What about it? Why am I thinking about the buzz that leads to a washing machine? Who? I used to watch my mom doing the wash. And then you realize, oh, this is asking me to think about mom. Or this is asking me to to tune out. I mean, whatever it is. So allow it to evolve as you focus on this. Yes. To be continued, I'll let you to know. To be continued. <laughs> wow, Mark, this was incredible. I, I can sit and talk with you for hours. I didn't get into like you. like a third of my questions. I have so much to like, like you have so much knowledge and you're very interesting. And I really well, appreciate you as a professional psychic and especially as a friend. And before we say goodbye for now, what are your three top tips to living a stellar life? Three top tips living a stellar life? Create, give yourself a seven minute vacation. That means seven minutes Try to work your way up to seven minutes a day where you're not thinking about uh, your work, the kids, your responsibilities, the job you have to go to. Try seven minutes where you, you create a little quiet space. In that space, you'll get something useful. Uh, I would say the second thing, do not doubt what you receive. Sometimes these crazy ideas and thoughts that come into your head, they may not make sense initially. Honor them. And write them down. The third thing is that if someone comes to you with a wild idea, be open. Just listen. I mean, you have to always protect yourself. But I would say, treat their if they're really trying to work on their ability, be kind and be friendly. And, and be aware of how your vibrational level can affect them. And I think that those people, when you find someone that you sync up with, they're, they're great to be around. All right, so try those that uh, match, you know, keep your uh, vibration high, seven minute vacation, and uh, don't doubt the messages you receive, I guess. Yes, I love that. And uh, Mark Christopher Nelson, I just learned that your middle name is Christopher. I like it. It's a great name. Thank you. Uh, where can people find you? You can, um, I've got my website is Mark Nelson Medium. Or mark the medium. Mm. And also, too, if you would like a personal consultation. Which I highly recommend. Highly, you. highly recommend. You, you um, mentioned to me the stellar, stellar Life, and I will give you a $25 discount. Oh, well, that's nice week. of you. See? My it's worth pleasure. it to be, to be listening to Stellar Life Podcast. Yeah, you just save 25 bucks, and you might learn something. You might <laughs> learn something. You will learn something for sure. It will be awesome experience. Like uh, all my readings with you are phenomenal. So, Mark, thank oh. you, thank you, darling. I really appreciate you. Thank you for all your right. time, your knowledge, your your fun stories. Big hug, and thank you, listeners. Remember to give yourself seven minutes of vacation every day. Trust what you receive and write it down. Be kind and open to new ideas. And have a stellar life. This is Orion. Till next time.